We discussed in the aftermath of the Aurora shooting what should be done. And I have to say, I, I, I was always, at that point, it, it was a tragedy, it was horrible, but I, I worry about passing laws based upon tragedies. And the, some of these officials that arrested uh, this, this Brandon Araub, uh, ex-Marine, uh, former Marine, they said that in the aftermath of Aurora, we have to take these things more seriously. I have to say, I think that because of maybe that sort of a mindset now, it seems clear to me they've overstepped their bounds here. I don't know if, if any of you feel differently this about this. This sounds like it's something out of Kafka. Yes. I, I mean, the, 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 to listen to his attorney describe what happened that morning and the fact that this is a former Marine even who doesn't own a gun. There was no gun in the property. I mean, it just seems this is frightening. Absolutely. Th 30 days also. I mean, that, that is a long time. Couldn't you, it seems like... Based on the information that's already been presented, the post that he's written, the fact that he didn't threaten anyone, the fact they're not charging with a crime, I read the things that he, that he wrote that, that at least were, were available and, and published, mm -hmm. and they were not, it was not somebody, it was, it's not like you're reading the rantings of a schizophrenic or somebody who seemed like they were deranged. It was somebody who had very strong political opinions that maybe some people find offensive, but the, it, the, it was coherent. So why would it take 30 well, we days? Why would it take this, 30 right? days to figure out if, if he's, you know, a, a psychiatrically I've, a, a I've threat? Two, two questions here, and just uh, for all of you. I, I see here the challenge in uh, someone who may be a mentally disturbed individual making threats. And so the idea that if, if someone's made a specific threat on Facebook or on Twitter, I would hope that someone would be paying attention and would at least take it seriously enough to investigate it. Yeah. Most of the time, it's probably going to turn out to be nothing. But I think we have to be, you know, acknowledge that in this day and age, stuff like that gets shared and does have consequences. So in other words, it. knock and on so, his door and check him out and say, hey, what's going on with this guy? And so I, I guess my question is, is at, at what point do we draw the line and sort of say, uh, we, we don't want local county officials to be making some kind of determination about this stuff. And then at what point do we say there is interest in the community being protected from someone who may be dangerous? I think this sets a dangerous precedent, the fact that they're able to do this. And, and that authorities on the scene apparently called people not there, and they relayed to them, well, this is, what we're, this is what's going on. They said, yeah, take that guy in. He's not being charged with the crime. His family hasn't sort of gone through. I believe there is a court proceeding you can go through to get somebody committed against their will if they are, in fact, uh, mentally unstable or a threat to themselves or others. But the things that he wrote did not seem to be threatening to anybody. That, that's what's so, what, what's so troubling about this, is that he didn't say, I'm going to go out and harm people. He quoted a song lyric at one point about, you know, sharpening his axe or something. But I don't think anybody thought that he was actually going to become an axe murderer. So John may have said the answer to this question, but I, I might have missed it. Um, how did the authorities become aware of his what John described as private group Facebook postings? Some of the people in the Facebook posting reported him. Somebody who had access which, to it apparently reported him. Which we've talked about this before. Right. I, I think to Ben's point, there has to be a, a, a middle ground here. Because we all look at people like Cho Sung Hui in Virginia Tech, Major Nadal Hassan at Fort Hood, and say there had to have been signs. Someone Jared Loeffner. And in the aftermath, we always see, yes, in fact, there were signs. There were red flags. I know you say, well, right. we, you know, this does not mean that we, we jump to uh, It's about finding those flags. It's not about passing right. laws. Right. So it's, I, I commend uh, the efforts of these Facebook users to say this guy might be a little off. I, I like that. But there has to be some um, something between uh, not saying anything and then going to arrest someone, not reading them their Miranda rights, and locking them up in a psych ward for 30 days. It seems so mysterious. I feel like we don't have full information here. Why did the people who knocked on the door and interview him get some feel of that he was a threatening individual? It seems strange that psychiatric professionals would be judging this from afar, as right. you say, like, you know, uh, armchair psychology. We're supposed to it's, not be If somebody of that. came to my door and they Why? said, you say crazy things, which sometimes maybe I do, right. <laughs> um, and, then, and I would be belligerent, and I think that's probably what happened here. I'm sure the law enforcement officers, the FBI, Why the this guy was saying, days? "Well, you, well, that's that's what I've said." The whole it. process, and again, you're in the hands of county officials here. They don't really care what's going on. They're just going to go by whatever the procedure is. The procedure, to me, seems very lacking. Thirty days to determine somebody's mental competency. I mean, it, it, that, this should a be a conversation. A month of your life locked up. I mean, that's that's a, a good amount of time. And I was also uh, very startled that uh, Mr. Whitehead Whitehead said that twenty thousand people per year in Virginia alone get arrested and put into involuntary psychiatric uh, confinement. Like that seems like a lot of people. Well, I'm sure some of those people were exhibiting like more of the signs of a, of a, of a, of a whatever, classically men mentally un unstable and, and dangerous person. But here, again, it's specifically political. 
I mean, he was writing things that upset people. He was writing about a coming revolution in America. He was writing, uh, you know, he was writing about 9-11 truth, about how the, a building was, um, was blown up by the U.S. government. 9-11 truth, as, as ridiculous and as idiotic and as insane it's as It's protected it by the First Amendment, it's is the point I was trying Amendment. to, that, that was the end and, of my sentence. And, that was, yeah, exactly. yeah, and you better, better get a big jail. 